before we start this video, a large thank you to Jalan125, Saif, Lalu, and Thomas for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hey guys, okay, so this will be our final housekeeping video for a while. So, if we start the game here, um, you can see that the enemy actually can't see me or attack me, and that is because in the last video I forgot to reset the tags and layers on our character. So, go to your player, and right where it says tag, make it player. This will allow the damage collider to do damage to you when you're hit. And you're also going to need to change the layer from character to player. Make sure you hit no this object only, or you may mess with the character collision blocker. So now you can see, it will run in, and this guy will target me, he'll hit me, and I'll do damage, or he'll do damage rather, and we're all good to go. Alright, so, last time we did the player, this time we're going to do the enemies reseeding. So, um, the same concept as last time, we're going to take these from the parent game object, and bring them down to the model, uh, and paste them as new components. So, I'm just going to do that with the first couple, and then do the rest off camera. So you want to grab the rigid body and capsule collider, copy component, and all the scripts, Right click and click paste component as new and then sort them as you please. Okay, so I'm just gonna do the rest of these off video. Alright, so I've got it done. I'm gonna drag the model game object out from the uh, enemy. I'm just gonna rename it enemy first. I'm gonna drag it out here like that. And then what you wanna do is you wanna take every other game object in here and basically uh, drag that under the new enemy game object. So everything the nav mesh, the lock on the enemy, um, enemy states, all of it. And then you can delete your old enemy game object. You're going to want to do the exact same thing uh, that we just did for this character here to all your enemies and save them as new prefabs. And of course, your boss. So before we move on to that, I'm going to rename the modular characters to model because this is where the enemy's model sits. And I'm also going to open up these scripts and do the same thing we have with our player, which is going to go, I'm going to go find everything here and change it from get component in whatever to just get component. So everything here now that is a, uh, I guess, a main function script, like stat manager, you know, the character manager, boss manager, that will be get component. This will not include things like your damage or your blocking collider and et cetera, et cetera. Those will be still in children. Going to change enemy uh, stats to enemy stats manager, and I'm going to right click and change enemy stats again to enemy stats manager. You may need to redrag that script on because it may give you um, kind of an error or a dead script. We'll see here now when we let this load up. Yep, and it did. So just remove the component, look up enemy stats manager, and drag it onto there. Now we're also going to set up some base classes in this video as well, um, and I will show you why those will be very helpful when we get around to doing that. But first, let's finish cleaning up the rest of these scripts. Okay, so uh, down here, that looks good. Okay, we need to change this to enemy stats manager, and instead of get component in parent, it must be get component. So I'm just going to erase this right here, and we're good to go. Let's save that. We'll do all these scripts together. Gonna to minimize this, go to enemy manager. Here we go, open it up. And there is a few here we need to change. So let's erase that. And let's change enemy stats to enemy stats manager, just to keep the naming conventions the same again. I know I'm a stickler for that. You'll thank me in the future. Let's change, no, nope, that's actually good. That is an advantage agent, that's fine. Okay, so let's go to the enemy stats manager now. And okay, then you change this here. So we got to change the enemy animator manager to get component. And that looks good. So let's save that moving briskly along. Let's go to the enemy locomotion manager. Let's open that up. And just the enemy animator manager needs to be changed here and we're good to go. I realize I'm going a bit fast, but I'm doing this because I think you guys get how to do this from last video. So now uh, make sure you drag back in your variables. So let's drag back in our collision uh, collider and set the detection layer to player. Otherwise, your enemy won't detect uh, your player. And I'm not sure if this is called on script, the enemy health bar. I can't remember. So just to be safe, I am going to drag it in. Oh, I guess it's not that. It must be the object parented under that, I believe. Uh, yeah, so the health bar. There we go. And let's check up here. I think all those things are called on script, so we should be good to go there. We'll get an error. If not, anyway, we'll know. Okay, so that's fine. Now, I'm not going to do the boss on video because it's the exact same process. So I'm going to quickly do this off camera so I'm not wasting too much of your time here. You know how to do it by now. Okay, make sure you put your tag on your enemy to enemy. Uh, otherwise, you won't be able to do any damage from the damage colliders. And uh, you should be good to go here now. So let's go open up the player manager. As you can see, this derives from character manager, right? And we have the enemy uh, manager, which also derives from character manager. That's good. So what we're going to do is, you see how we have these flags here for is an air, is grounded, can do combo. Well, some of these are actually shared. 
uh, I mean not shared used by the enemy manager and some of them will be in the future. So instead of rewriting them and writing two copies of each code, we're just going to basically copy all of this right here now uh, because these will all be used for the enemy in the future if they're not being used right now. And we're going to go over to the character manager and we're just going to paste them in and put them in the proper under the proper header. Because if we didn't have a base class to derive from, we would basically have to write all this code twice. What we're going to do is, is we're going to share the variables we need and when they need to be changed, we will make... Um, like variations for them in their classes that this class will inherit from. So the enemy manager and the player manager may be slightly different, but they are going to share a lot of the same data. So instead of wasting all that code and writing it twice and getting confused and having to change things in two locations every single time we make alterations, now we just change it in one. And I don't think we call the enemy manager here on the on the script. So let's get rid of that on the enemy stat manager. Let's just delete that from awake and above here. Okay, that looks good. Just going to check this over real quick, make sure we're, yep, that looks good. So we're going to circle by uh, a lot of our scripts now and we're going to, we're going to change a lot of our variables and we're going to place them on the base class that the script will basically inherit this stuff from. And that will make calling these things a lot more convenient in the future. All right, so as you can see, take damage, no animation here is actually on both of these stat managers, but it's not on the character stat manager, and they're pretty much identical. Uh, I think save one minor detail. So we're going to change it from public void to public override void on the player stat manager and the enemy stat manager. And then we're going to make a public virtual void on the character stat manager. Because some of, the, some of these details, like I said, they're exactly the same. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it on the character stat manager right below take damage. I'm going to change override to virtual void and the override will override this one on the two other classes and uh, this right here I think is all good so make sure we have them both locations this bit of code so public override void on the player and enemy stat manager public virtual void on the character stat manager and uh, we actually need to add this health bar dot set current health in the players take damage so let's copy and paste that right there otherwise it wouldn't update our health bar if we took a damage with no animation okay so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy all this code right here because this is basically going to uh, run for both the enemy and the player. So I'm going to say base dot take damage no animation pass the damage, and I'm going to go over to the base class and I'm going to paste in this code because this code will run for both the enemy and the player. And then on the enemies here, I'm going to basically erase this. I'm just going to put in base dot take damage no animation, so we get that code, and I can delete this down here because again, this is already included. And this just checks and updates our health bars accordingly, and so does our players. So we can save that now. That's good. I'm just going to erase that for now. There we go. Looks good. Okay, let's move on to the next script. All right, on the animator manager here, and the enemy animator manager, and the player animator manager, we have a lot of functions we're writing twice, and it just doesn't need to be so. So you can see how this is player manager dot is parrying and it'll say enemy manager on the other one and then it will say you know such and such and whatever and a lot of these uh, functions actually just say animator dot do this or dot set bull to this. Well we know both enemy and player have an animator so let's start with that. All of these functions right here let's copy them off the player animator manager and let's delete them from here and paste them in the animator manager which is the base class because all these functions they all say animator dot set bool and we have these bools on both the player and the enemy so let's say public virtual void public virtual void just basically change all these from public void to public virtual void there we go public virtual void and public virtual void see this is the benefit of having your player uh, similar to your enemy is you can share a lot of the logic and use it um, very simply across a base class Okay, so let's go to the enemy manager here now and delete all these little underlined green codes because it means we've basically already have them on the base class. Now you'll see this one's a bit different. It says enemy manager dot is parrying. Okay, and we have our enemy manager up here. That's fine. Now the other one will say player manager dot is parrying. Well, there's actually a trick we can do to this. Because is parrying is actually on the character manager base class, uh, both the enemy manager and the player manager get that. So let's delete all these from the player and enemy animator manager and let's paste them on the regular animator manager uh, and what we can do is instead of saying player or enemy manager we can just say character manager and since the player and the enemy manager both count as a character manager it will change the bool on those scripts respectfully uh, if it's called on the player or the enemy 
So this is just like a little cheat code. If you call it on the character manager and the player or the enemy manager inherit those values from the character manager, changing them on the character manager here will change them on the player or enemy manager in game. So let's call the character manager under get component character manager here in awake. And we can actually then change enemy to character manager, character manager, and character manager and character manager. And then we can erase all these functions on the player animator manager. And we can change these to a virtual void here now in case we need to edit something in the future to make them slightly different, but we don't need to for now. So we can actually just eradicate them all and look how much space and how much neater that is right now already. Okay, so let's go here now. And this is very similar to this take critical damage, no animation. This can be also thrown down here as well because um, the pending damage is shared on both the enemy and the player and the take damage, no animation is shared across both. We would just say character stats manager, which we don't have called yet. And then we would say character stats manager and character stats manager. So let's go up here and call the character stats manager. We can call that on awake, just the same as we're doing here with the character manager. So we'll say character stats manager equals get component character stats manager. Okay, now let's do a couple more things. Okay, we still have an error here. I'm just going to check this out. Okay, so I made a mistake. This is actually on the character manager, not the character stats manager for this pending damage, but the uh, take damage no animation is still the character stats manager. So the reason why we're still getting errors is because this function is actually already here as a virtual void, but there's nothing in it. Um, we can actually just make this one the virtual void now and delete the old one up there. We actually don't need to call this and override it on the player or enemy animator manager because nothing is different. So uh, at least not at this point in development. So we can actually get rid of that um, function altogether on the enemy animator manager. There we go. And so far so good. Okay. And that is a lot neater and a lot cleaner. We have so many shared functions. We actually delete the stats manager and the enemy manager on the enemy animator manager because we're using them as character managers um, and it's being called in the base class. But for that to actually take effect, let's change this private void awake to a protected virtual void. Um, so we'll actually call it on the other scripts and we're going to change this from a private void to a protected override void. So we're calling the, uh, we're gonna write down base dot awake as well. So we're calling the first awake method, but then we're also adding our own things to it as well. And we'll do the same thing on the player animator manager because I think uh, our awake method is different. I used this initialize a long time ago. I'm not a fan of it now. Um, don't know why I did it. Honestly, I have no, no clue. I think I was a fan of it before, but I'm gonna make this a protected override void awake. I'm gonna call the base awake and I'm going to copy, uh, I'm gonna delete the stats manager here and delete it from here. And the, I'm going to delete the player manager as well for the same reason that we are actually already calling that on the base class. And I'm going to copy all this logic and paste it right under the base awake. And then I'm going to see where I actually call that initialize function. I'm going to delete it because it's uh, it's better just to use awake. I don't know why I did that. Start and awake are much nicer. Okay, so I call this right here on, initial, on the initialize. So let's just erase that. And then let's actually go back to the player animator manager and we're going to erase the function altogether. So there's no more initialize function that shouldn't break anything. If it does, I'll fix it. Um, we're going to base all of our initialization using the start and awake methods, awake being priority one and uh, start being priority two. Okay. So we have an error here. Let's double click it. it brings us to the enemy animator manager. This is actually because we don't have a souls awarded on death. Um, we need to change this to character stats manager and we actually don't have it on character stats. It's only on the enemy stats, but in souls, if you kill a character, a player, you actually still get souls awarded on death. So let's, uh, let's actually change this to protected first, both of these to protected on the base class. And then we're going to go to the enemy stats manager. We're going to copy the souls awarded on death variable and we're going to delete it. And then we're going to put that variable under character, uh, stats because in the future, we're actually going to make it so if you, when we do, when we do PVP, uh, if you kill a character too, that's a player, you will still get souls awarded on death, but that's uh, a little while is away yet. So let's put that right there and save it. Okay. And that will get rid of that error. We're good to go. Excellent. So let's do the rest of these here now. Okay. So we have this here now. If player manager is interacting, that's easy. 
we'll say dot character manager is interacting and surprisingly we actually don't have the is interacting variable on the base class but that is on both the enemy manager as you can see here and the player manager so let's actually delete that from both and paste that on the character manager which is the base class which again uh, make sure it's public or protected we'll give it access to both it does need to be public in this case because we're referencing it in a bunch of scripts so let's say header and we're just going to call this interacting or interaction and that will stop that error and we're good to go okay so let's see what else we got to fix okay i think these last one are in the same function yes they are okay so you can do this a couple of ways you can reference the enemy manager um or you can put the rigid body on the character managers instead of having it on the locomotion manager but i'm not going to do that i'm just literally going to change this or keep it as enemy manager and i'm going to add the enemy manager variable on this and call it on awake um, so this one will be slightly different because we actually store some information in different places on our enemy than on our player because obviously our enemy is an AI and our player is the actual character. So some information is placed differently and that's it. Just call that there and you're good to go. That should get rid of every single error. Yes. Okay. Now uh, let's go on to the next script here. What are we doing now? Let me check it out here on my little list. Okay, yeah, right. The player weapon slot manager. As you can see, we have an enemy weapon slot manager and a player weapon slot manager, and they're both a mono behavior. So let's right click and create a new script. Let's call this character weapon slot manager. Uh, we do this because right now our enemy and our player, they don't inherit from any base class, and we don't want that. We want to want to simplify that because they have a bunch of shared data, so we might as well make it inherit from home class. Let's say namespace, mine is SG, yours is whatever you so wish. And let's erase the start and update functionality. So we know we're sharing our damage colliders and our hand slots right now. So let's start with those. Let's put those in. Uh, we're going to make them protected or public. I think we need to make them public in both cases here because it appears on our player they need to be public. On our enemy they don't need to be. Uh, so let's make them public on the base class. Okay, so I'm going to copy all this here and delete it. We're actually not taking over the attacking weapon. That's only on our player for now. In the future, though, probably are going to use that for our enemy as well. Uh, now, you will notice that our player actually does not have um, the left and right weapon. Uh, and our enemy does. Because our player uses the inventory. So let's change this to character weapon slot manager on both the player and enemy weapon slot manager script. Make it drive from the base class. And I believe we need to, yep, that we can then get rid of these four variables here because they inherit. And we also need to go to the weapon slot manager and make the back slot uh, public or protected, I think. I'll just check in this real quick. Uh, yes, okay, right here. Now in the future, we're going to make an inventory for our enemy as well. Uh, and we're going to use our enemy's inventory to basically hold the left and right weapon variable just like our player. But we're not going to, we don't have any reason to actually branch off into the inventory yet. So we'll leave that for future content. We are probably going to use the attacking weapon variable here too. But right now, like I said, just frees up a lot of space. You can see all we have here now is the left and right weapon because our enemy uses that and our player doesn't. So uh, if I start the game now, you will see that everything is in working order. I can take damage, I can dodge, and our enemy will find us. And he will try to kill us and hurt us. Just like before, you can see there I take some damage. All right, guys, so... Uh, I know this was a lot of reorganization and basically bookkeeping, but trust me when I say it is very necessary and is a very important step to what for what is to come in the very near future. So if you guys did like this video, please be sure to drop a like, leave a comment. It does genuinely help my series out a lot, and you guys are so good at that. If you're feeling like a super champion, check out my Patreon below. And now in the next episode, which hopefully will get up very soon, we're going to add some new content. Let's add some polished things now. We're going to add some weapon tracers, I believe, in the next video for the enemy and the character. So basically, when you swing a sword, your sword will leave a wispy little particle effect through the air. It just looks nice. I find it adds a lot to the game. All right, guys. I will see you in the next one.